we're going to be looking at alcohol today and in particular ethanol because ethanol is the alcohol that most of us are most interested in. It's Martin. How was the filming, Martin? It's only just begun. This is a model of ethanol. Two carbons, five hydrogens here, oxygen here and another hydrogen there. Most people are familiar with alcohol because of alcoholic drinks. One of my colleagues uh, at my old university did point out it looked a bit like a, a dog shape. So although hair of the dog is an English term uh, referring to an alcoholic drink you'd drink um, in order to combat hangover, it doesn't come from the shape of the molecule. Beer, wine, all sorts of things like vodka. These are all made by fermentation of some natural material, maybe juice from some sort of fruit like a grape, or some sort of grain, wheat, barley, and so on. Today what we're going to do with all these different alcoholic drinks is actually distill them. So the process of distillation um, will actually uh, purify these alcoholic drinks. It will mean that we can actually get as, as close to pure alcohol as we can. Alcohol has been terribly important in human history because in the days before people discovered how to purify water, they used to drink weak beer where the alcohol killed most of the bacteria and so they could drink safely. In Asia, people used to boil water and make tea, but this wasn't discovered in Europe and, and the West till many, many years later. Right, what we're going to do now is actually distill the alcohol out of a can of beer. So the beer is going to go into that large flask there. We'll connect it up to this, which is known as the still head. On top of that will be our thermometer. Alcohol vapour will collect around here, go down this arm and into this bit. Now here we've actually got some cold running water uh, creating a, a jacket of, of coolness around the uh, glass tube inside it. So the alcohol vapour will get condensed into a liquid. That will flow down into the receiver and into our little round bottom flask. Alcohol has now suddenly, or ethanol, ethyl alcohol, has become enormously important as a possible means of solving our transport problems. You can burn ethanol in car engines. You can mix it with gasoline to produce a material which will still operate in car engines. You can make the ethanol from all sorts of different grains, from wheat, from maize. You can tell I don't pour pints for a living. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Awful job, I have another truly abysmal job. Okay, there we go. Can of beer in the flask, and now we're going to heat that up. The isomantle is now heating up, so that will actually heat up the sides and the bottom of this round bottom flask. So, what's going to happen is that you've got alcohol and water inside that vessel. The water should stay in there until, you know, if we get up to 100 degrees C, only then will it boil. But before we get to 100, the alcohol will come off first at around about 78 degrees C. Any organic compound that contains a, an oxygen-hydrogen group is known as an alcohol. People, when they talk about ethanol, usually also call it alcohol. But you can get um, so-called methyl alcohol, methanol, which has CH3OH, and you can make this methanol by distilling wood, and it's sometimes known as wood alcohol. It's very poisonous, causes blindness, and quite frequently that methanol is added to ethanol to stop people drinking it, so-called methylated spirits. But there are a whole series of alcohols, propanol, butanol, pentanol, and so on, and all of them are used in making chemicals, doing chemical reactions. But ethanol is by far the most common. And so alcohol, when chemists are talking, is often a shorthand for ethanol. We've got the alcohol there, which is bubbling up, forming alcohol vapour into this area here, which is the still head. So what will happen is it's coming across there as vapour, but once it hits this cold part of glass, it condenses on it and it's trickling down flows along the condenser. So what we're getting right at the end here, into the receiver and then into the round bottom flask is the alcohol from the beer. One of the problems when you distill alcohol from water 
is that you cannot get it 100% pure because ethanol and water form a so-called azeotrope. What distills over is 97 or 98% pure, but you can't get rid of the last 2% of water. The only way you can remove it is by adding a third material. Quite often people add benzene to it. So the alcohol that we have in the lab doesn't contain much water, but it does contain nasty things, which means that if you drink them, you could be seriously poisoned. From this can of beer, we've managed to get about this much alcohol. Um, so not a huge amount, but that's what we've managed to achieve on our crude distillation apparatus here. But there you go. I drink some wine, but unfortunately I don't like beer, which is a real disadvantage in some countries where beer drinking is a big tradition. So I fail in when I go to countries like Germany or Belgium. I can't really appreciate their national drinks. We're going to be putting some fortified wine now into our round bottom flask and then that will be connected to the distillation apparatus. Alcohol is used in the lab quite frequently, very often as a solvent for doing chemical reactions. It can also be used just for washing things because it will dissolve quite a wide range of organic compounds. So if you wash your flask in alcohol, then you can get nice clean glassware. It should come off about 78. There are bacteria that can oxidize ethanol. They turn ethanol into ethanoic acid, acetic acid. It's what makes vinegar. And so if you have a bottle of wine it, and leave it open to the air, or air leaks into the bottle, it starts getting acid. It becomes more like vinegar. And when I was a teenager again, I was quite an enthusiastic chemist, and my father opened a bottle of wine, which was a bit acid. So I had this brilliant idea. I took a so-called iron exchange resin that removes the acid from anything, and I poured his wine through the iron exchange resin. It was a fantastic success. It stopped being acid, but it tasted absolutely foul. Right, and there we have it. So there's our wine, there's the alcohol from it. Cheers.